Thank you for joining us on this, the Frank Sontag Show. We begin, as we do each hour, with our Impact segment. Impact is 20-plus minutes of uninterrupted dialogue and discussion every weekday at 4 and 5 Pacific, right here on the Frank Sontag Show. In the first hour, we've been talking about God's plan in our life and heeding His call and how God is fight, uh, faithful. And for some of us, we go through great trials and tragedies in our life, but in some ways, our faith is deepened from all of this. My next guest is a woman I've not met before. I've not even talked to her. I didn't have a moment off the air to say hello. She is um, someone who I saw on a video testimony, and she is owner of Overcomer Apparel. Valerie Angel, welcome to the Frank Sontag Show. Thank you so much for having me. Valerie, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Appreciate thank you for uh, Absolutely. for allowing me to to share. Grateful that you're on the program. If you would, as I said, I, I saw your video testimony. Share a little bit about some how that that video came to be uh, shot and put on social media, and then obviously I want to get into great detail about so much of what you've been through in your life. Well, um, you know the past couple of years have been extremely difficult. You know, I've gone through some very trying situations and, um, you know, Revelations 12, 11 tells us that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. And so I just knew that God had been telling me for some time that my key to really moving forward and overcoming everything is to be able to share my testimony. And, and so you know, um, I just decided, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this video. I'm gonna I'm gonna put all of my life out there, and it was very um, I was very emotional, and it, I was very scared for fear of what people would think of me because I knew that once I put it out there, sure. it was gonna be open for everybody to see. Sure, you know. So um, I I released it about a month ago, and since then there has been about. 12,000 views on it in about a month. And so to me, that means in one month, 12,000 people have heard about the hope and salvation that I found in Jesus. Well, I I don't want to personalize this and somehow bring it to me, but it's interesting. I did not know that story. And truth be told, four years ago today, I was on this radio program when the previous host, a man that went home to the Lord uh, three years ago, Frank Pastore, I was on his show and gave my public testimony for the first time today four years ago. So let's wow. let's talk about the power of our personal testimony. If you would, talk a bit about your early days when you were a young child and some of the very trying and painful things that you went through. Well, you know, I guess everything starts for me uh, where I can remember my most vivid memories was when I was five years old. And I witnessed the murder of my mother um, by my father. And, you know, that right there was traumatizing. And, you know, I I witnessed my hero taking the life of my mother. And I found out soon after that they had found the the body of my father floating in a river. Mm. And so, you know, at the age of five, I was... I was orphaned, you know, by the loss of my parents, and it definitely had such a traumatizing impact on my life. You know, I had many flashbacks and so, so many confused feelings, anger and depression and and worthlessness, and, you know, seeing something like that, it, it just, it really messes you up, you know? Um, from there, you know, trying to, trying to make sense of it and, you know, not understanding why that happened and why my father would do that and why he would leave me, you know, because I I was a daddy's girl and, and I, I just, I couldn't understand it, you know? And so, you know, when I got into like my teen years, uh, probably at the age of, I don't know, 12, 13, I found that drugs and alcohol were a great way to temporarily suppress those feelings. And that helped me for a little bit anyway, you know, to kind of 
quiet my mind, you know, and, um, and like so many, so many people that grow up without a, without a father, I started looking for that, that love of a father in all the wrong places, sure. you know, sure. and, um, you know, I, I went to, I wanted that male attention. And of course, you know, I, I, I found it in the wrong places and I became pregnant at the age of 15. Mm. Yeah. Uh, let me reintroduce you. Valerie Angel is my guest. In those, in that decade or so, from the time you were five till you were 15, your teen years, were you in foster care? Did you have a family take you in? How, how did you live? So, um, thank God, you know, my, my grandmother, my, my mom's mom raised me, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, she, she took me in and, and she took care of me the best that she could, you know, she, thank God that I did have family that was raising me. Mm-hmm. However, it didn't, it didn't take away from the feelings of feeling like I was an orphan. Sure. Sure. Even though I had that family there, it just it it still did not fill that void that I had in my heart. Sure. Did your your grandmother have faith in God at all? Were you raised with um, with faith in any way, shape, or form through this uh, obviously incomprehensibly difficult time? Um, you know, my my grandmother is is a very strong Catholic. Um, and so I was raised in a Catholic home. However, that faith, I feel, never played a part in my life whatsoever. I, I went through the rituals of going to church and, and all of that, but it never impacted my life whatsoever. I, I never found it as a source of comfort. Mm-hmm. So at 15, as a young teenager, you become pregnant and give birth to your daughter. I would imagine in some ways, Maybe for the first time in a long time, you felt a sense of new love, and yet you still had a lot of wounds from the past. Exactly. Yes, I, I had my daughter, and I named her um, after my mother. You know, and I just I felt like I had a reason to live again. You know, and you know, I just I had somebody to love. I had my own family now, and I mean, it, it was it was a changing moment in my life. However. Now I'm trying to raise a child, and I'm still a child, and I'm I'm still trying to deal with my emotions, and and still trying to find my place in the world, and still dealing with depression and anger and sadness. But now I'm a parent. Valerie Angel is my guest. She has. Did you put your video up? Did you do that yourself? So I knew a very um, great. Um, videographer and um I, I've known him for a while and I just I knew that I had to go to him to to put this video out for me. I knew that he could capture um everything that I wanted, you know, in a very intimate setting and so he he was kind enough to to do this video for me. Yeah, the video I'm making reference to is Valerie's testimony and actually how we found her on social media and invited her on the program to share her testimony. So if you would talk more about your teen years, the birth of your daughter, how was life? And obviously we want to get more current, but there's still so much to, to share and to tell. Right. So, I mean, I, I, I'm trying to raise my daughter. I was a single parent for a few years um, up until I turned um, 18 and I, I began a relationship. And at the age of 19, I got married. And... Um, when I got married, we decided that we would definitely not be able to survive a marriage without having God, you know, um, we, we had come, we had talked about God and, and just determined, you know, without God, there's, there's no way that we can make it work. And so, um, we started going to church. We got married. I was 19 years old. I was, I was young, you know, and, um, we started going to church that same week. Sure. And right there, that is where my whole life changed. Talk about what type of church did you go to? Did you become Christian? Did you have a, a moment why, by which you gave your life to Christ? Tell us more about the church and how you and your husband decided to start this new life, if you will. So we started going to a Christian church, which was very different for me. Because, you know, again, I was raised in a Catholic home, so it was very, you know, it was a night and day difference. And I I was kind of resistant to the change, you know, um, but I 
somehow I felt God tugging on my heart. And so we, we ba- began going to church and it wasn't like instantly that I went to church that, you know, everything changed. It was, you know, going and, and every Sunday and every Wednesday and all of these services just beginning to, to feel God's love and feeling him t- tugging on my heart. And I remember, you know, um, one night at, at an altar call, just, you know, being there at the altar and just feeling the presence of God and, and feeling it, you know, just take over and feeling such a peace. And, you know, it was like right there. I knew that even all those years that I felt like I was an orphan and I felt like I was all alone and I just wanted my father. Well, now I, I began to realize like I was never an orphan. I was adopted by grace, but I had the ultimate father. I had a father in God and he never left me. And even though all those years I felt alone, he was always with me. Mm. Valerie Angel is my guest. So you began to go to church with your new husband and um, many people obviously don't know your story. They can see your video clip. We'll kind of give out info in a little while. But um, so what transpired as you and your husband began to become involved in your own ministry, if you will? So um, very quickly, uh, my husband was, you know, involved in ministry. He was a, a Christian rapper. And so um, together we teamed up, you know, I, I would make his beats. I would, um, do all of the behind the scenes so he could minister. I would do the artwork for his albums and set up his events. And we did many outreaches where we literally took the gospel to the streets. We set up outreaches in, in neighborhoods and we gave out backpacks to, to kids at the beginning of the school year. And we did free barbecues and, and all of these things. And at the same time, we're telling people about the love of God. And so for 13 years, we were just doing this. We were traveling and just having these urban outreaches and and spreading the gospel in that way. And you say for 13 years, and yet that that doesn't necessarily bring us up to current times. Something happened at the end of that 13 years. Right. So... um, Three years ago, um, my husband left. You know, he he left, and we got a divorce, and it was very unexpected. It was I never I didn't see it coming, and that right there again here here I am, and you know, and and it's changing my life again. This this was something so unexpected. And, you know, the enemy, you know, we have a great God, but we also have an enemy yeah. that has watched us all our lives and he knows our weak spots. And so here again, the enemy comes with a low blow and he hits me with this, you know, feelings of you're not worth, you know, you're not worth it. You're not worthy of being loved. Here I am again, feeling abandoned and alone and just worthless. My, my self-confidence was out the window and I just felt alone alone and um it it was devastating it was the most devastating thing that I've ever been through in my life and you know the loss of my parents was hard but this was this was everything because you know all I ever wanted in life was to have a family and now that was being taken away from me and no. It was it was a difficult time. Yeah, I want to say that I, I watched the entire video. It's about 11 or 12 minutes. And um, as hard as it is to hear your story, that was three years ago. You directed a great deal of your attention in part of the video to the last three years. And as you say, it's the most difficult time in your life. But you have an undeniable sense that God is present in your life. Could you talk more about that? Well, Romans 8, 28, um, we know that God works out all things for the good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. That scripture has brought me through my darkest days because I know that no matter what, without a doubt, no matter what has happened to me up until this point and, and from the future, you know, going forward, that God is going to turn everything around for my good, no matter what 
I've gone through, what I've been through, what I will go through, he's given me a peace and a hope and a strength that there's no way I could get through any of this by myself. Um, he, he has just been there through this, through this whole time, through this trying time, you know, um, I, I did come to a breaking point, um, you know, through my divorce where I, I was just so broken and I didn't want to live anymore. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I did, you know, I did attempt to take my life and God had another plan. He did not allow that to happen and he saved my life and gave me, just gave me a hope that, you know what, I'm not alone. He's never going to abandon me. It doesn't matter who leaves in my life. He's always going to be there. Mm-hmm. And so these past three years, well, you know, now I'm divorced. Now I'm a single mom. Now I've been laid off from a job twice in three years. Like all of these things were happening and and I was losing friends and, you know, just these dark times that I always could rely on God. He has never left me. He has never forsaken me. He has, he has been my strength. You know, when I'm tired, when I'm weary, he is, he has been the one to lift my head. Now you've mentioned you've been laid off from a job twice. Talk about how overcomer apparel came into existence, how you started that, and more about that newfound ministry and business that you are involved with. Well, I mean, it's, it's so crazy because um, I started this uh, clothing line, and the whole idea came about it um, just this, this past October, just a few months ago. And I was talking to a family member about it, and I was just telling them that, you know, I, I would like to start a clothing line, and um, he really encouraged me. He really believed in me and, and made me feel like I could do it, you know, and, and I was excited. I was like, yes, I can do this. And then probably a few weeks later, I lost my job. And I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. How am I going to have the money to do this? And God makes a way where there is no way, you know, this family member, you know, just, seed it into this ministry to be able to start this clothing line. And so I I said, you know, I want to do something that is going to give, give people a way to declare their faith, you know, to declare that, you know, no matter what you go through, you know, with God, you can get through anything. And that's where Overcomer Apparel comes from. You know, we, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And so now in... Uh, March, <laughs> just at the beginning of March, I, I, you know, put out my website, I started my clothing line. And, you know, I'm almost two months into this. And I've had, you know, just amazing support from people. And, um, you know, I, I released the video at the same time, because, you know, the, the tagline for, for the brand is it's more than a brand, it's a testimony. And that's, that's what this is. It's not just about selling clothes. It's about giving people the strength to, to tell their testimony and let people know that that's where our strength comes from, you know, through God and through our testimony. I want to speak clearly into the record. You did not contact us. It's not like you solicited being on the program. We found you through your video and invited you on the program to talk about your testimony and also overcomer your apparel, which, by the way, if you would like to see Valerie's work, the website is overcomerapparel.org, overcomerapparel.org. And, Valerie, we've got a couple minutes in closing. Um, with everything that you've been through, I know many of us as Christians, we sometimes say, God, are you are you even there? The, the moment I need you most, it seems like you're most silent, and yet you're a woman that clearly understands who he is and what faith is about. Share in closing in the couple of moments we have. Your relationship with God and the importance for all of us to pray and to recognize we'll never be alone once we say yes to him. Right. Um, you know, going through all of this stuff, um, I realized that, you know, God is so good and he is so faithful and alone. We, we can't make it. You know, this life is hard. And whether, you know, you have gone through something or not, 
you know, like life is about storms. You know, we are either coming out of a storm or in the storm or going going into a storm, you know, and we can't make it without the anchor, which is Jesus. And, you know, going through all of this stuff, going through all of this pain and this heartache, um, now I've become a magnet. It, it, it's crazy. I've become a magnet for hurting people because hurting people, they're searching for hope. And they can see, like, you know, I, I've gone through, I've gone through some stuff and I can still hold my head up and I, and I have hope and people want to know what that is. And I can give them the hope, which is found in Christ. Mm. Valerie Angel has been my guest. Angel and Valerie both with two L's. And again, she is the creator and owner of Overcomer Apparel, overcomerapparel.org is the website. Valerie, thank you. As you say, it's more than a brand. It's a testimony. Thank you for sharing your testimony on our program. Thank you so much for having me. God bless you. God bless you as well. You are listening to this, The Frank Sontag Show. 